What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going over one of my many off-season workouts in the weight room. So if you wanna hear more about that, how I train myself, how I get ready to pitch and try to improve my strength and elasticity and speed and stuff like that, stick around. But first hit that subscribe button because this video is made for my subscribers only. So I'll give you a second to do that. So before we get started, I wanna give a big shout out to all of my introverts on my Discord channel. Uh, I have a couple channels set up to talk pitching and training and ask for videos, video requests and stuff like that. So to everyone who's been active in those channels, really appreciate it. Um, you guys are giving me great ideas and this video is actually inspired by some of the questions asked in my Discord channel. So if you guys would like to join the Discord channel, uh, down below in the description there's a link. It is active for one hour after this video posts and you guys can join as well. So come be part of the introverts and ask me questions. I'm in there basically every day interacting and hanging out with fans. So wanted to give that a little bit of a plug. Okay, let's get into my off season training. So the first thing that needs to be said, there's a couple uh, framework things that I need to talk about first. Um, mostly you need to understand the strength and speed spectrum. So on one end of the spectrum, you have maximum strength. That's as much weight as you can lift for one rep. That's a one rep max. As many of you will know about it with that term. On the other end, you have a maximum speed. Okay, that's as fast as you can possibly go. Basically no weight, just as fast as you can go. And in the middle, you have some sort of gradient of the two. So it goes max strength, and then a strength focus with some speed, and then a speed focus with some strength, and then a speed focus. So it's max strength, uh, strength speed, speed strength, max speed. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing we need to talk about is elasticity and power and all that. So you have strength, which is uh, how much weight you can move, and then you have power, which is how fast you can move a certain weight. Uh, and then you have speed, which is just how fast you can move kind of body weight. And then you have elasticity, which is uh, accepting force and rebounding it. Think of like a trampoline. Uh, a ball might hit a trampoline. A person might hit a trampoline. The trampoline kind of absorbs it and springs it back out, which will be a lot more force than if the person just stood on solid ground and tried to jump or the ball just started on solid ground and something like that. So uh, strength, power, speed, elasticity. Those are our main kind of, those are the four main types of things that we might want to train. Um, and then uh, I have my off season stuff broken up into different blocks. Now, I guess you could call these periodizations. Uh, that's what most people call them. Uh, and traditionally, you'll see a, a strength focus early on in the off season. So you're going to build a base layer of strength and then you're going to move into a power uh, block and then you'll move into a speed and elasticity block. Uh, strength is a prerequisite to power and power is a prerequisite to speed. So it makes sense that you would build the strength first, then develop the power and then develop the speed and elasticity. Now, with that being said, I've kind of reached my uh, strength minimum or my strength uh, baselines, so to speak. Like at some point, being stronger isn't going to help me as much as being more powerful. And at some point, being more powerful isn't going to help me as much as being more elastic or faster. And so, since I have crossed those thresholds uh, for strength, I'm focused a lot more on the power and the speed end of the spectrum because that's where I can still improve. Now, the reason for our saying all of this stuff is not to bore you guys, but it's to illustrate the point that what my program is at this point of my career is not what your program should be at your stage of your career. Uh, if you're a high school kid, if you're a college kid, if you're a young uh, minor leaguer, you're gonna have different programs. You have different needs and different focuses, and you shouldn't just copy what I'm doing because it's probably not the most optimal for you and also probably is more dangerous for you. Uh, it might open you up to more risk of injury. So disclaimer on that front. And with all that being said and the groundwork being laid in the terminology, let's talk about what my program is. I have a nine day rotation. So I'm having three max speed days and 
and a little bit of power. So I'll be almost all speed with some overspeed maybe. So going faster using bands to help me accelerate or something. So, and then I'll have a little bit of power, very, very lightweight. Uh, and so that's the uh, overspeed, that's the speed, max speed, and that is the speed strength end of the spectrum. So I have three of those days. Let's call that day one, day four and day seven. On day two, five, and eight, I have a max acceleration day. Now that is the uh, power end of the spectrum. That's the strength speed focus. So I'm going to be doing uh, max acceleration stuff. I'm gonna have a decent amount of weight and I'm trying to accelerate it from zero as fast as I possibly can. Uh, and then I'm going to have a max strength day. Um, every ninth or 10th day. Now the reason for this is since I've reached my strength baselines, uh, there's been some studies out there that show that you can maintain strength by doing a max lift every nine or 10 days, somewhere in that range. And since I'm not trying to get stronger per se, uh, I'm just looking to maintain it. So my ability to be powerful and fast don't go away. Uh, I'm fine lifting max every ninth or 10th day. Um, I've actually seen my strength numbers go up a little bit by focusing on the power end of the spectrum, but that's a different story. So that's one of the days, we'll call that day uh, three. Then on day six, I will have a fast eccentric control day. Now, that's basically like me dropping off of a box. This is just an example. I might drop off a box and hit the ground and just stick it, okay? now. This is the plyometric version of, or this is the plyometric um, elastic training, so to speak. There's three main components to elasticity. There's the absorbing force phase, that's eccentric. Then you're gonna have an isometric phase, a very brief isometric phase where you hit the bottom and your body is not moving. And then you're going to have a concentric phase. Uh, so I break those down and I train each of those uh, individually. So I'll have one day where I'm going through a bunch of fast eccentric control and stop at the bottom. Then I'll have uh, one of my days be a full cycle plyometric because on my max acceleration days, I'm working on the concentric part. So I get three of those days. I get one day of max eccentrics or uh, fast eccentrics. And then I have one day where I'm gonna get the full cycle plyometric, uh, maybe like a box drop where I'm gonna drop off a box, hit and try to rebound and jump. Um, and with that, I'm going to also do isometrics on that day. So that's how I have my whole kind of lifting schedule broken out. So let's talk about this specific lift that you're gonna see in this video. This is a max acceleration day with some upper body hypertrophy. Okay. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is a sled push. Uh, you can do a sled pull, you can do a sled push. There is some research out there on the benefits of what is uh, better for power development, how to progress it, stuff like that. Um, I'm using a tank sled, um, you can see it here, and it's got a motor in it. Um, it's not an electric motor, it's just uh, it resists the front wheel depending on the setting. So I have it on setting one, I have some weight on there, and I'm just going through a sled push. Now the purpose of this is to start in a position where I can accelerate as fast as possible. Um, I'm going to start in a static position and I'm going to drive into it and be as explosive as possible for, uh, here I'm doing it about 45 feet. Uh, and this is just a pure uh, get going as quick as possible and um, go from there. So be as powerful as I possibly can. Now a couple cues on this. I'm trying to keep my spine uh, in line. I'm not trying to round it at all. Sometimes I do a poor job of that. Um, I'm also trying to strike the ground with my foot directly under my hips. Sometimes I do a poor job of that as well. I don't have the best running form uh, because of my hip structure, but that is what I'm attempting to do here. Now I do this kind of in the beginning of the lift. It's almost like a warm up. Uh, I'm fully warmed up to do it, but it's uh, priming kind of the, the mechanism of, okay, I'm gonna move fast and I need to be explosive and get after it. Uh, so I'm doing six of those. After that, um, I'm going into a split squat and a jammer press uh, superset. So on the split squat, again, I'm just working on the concentric portion of the lift 
in this lift, the max acceleration. So I'm actually gonna go down into the split squat and I'm going to stop down there. I'm gonna rest my knee on the pads and the pads are here because if I get too low in a split squat, my hip structure, again, I end up uh, pulling my groin, uh, my hips get out of alignment and stuff like that because I don't have the structural range to get down. So I've found the range that I do have. I put the pads at that height. I go down, I rest my knee on the pads and then I explode up. Now, one thing you'll notice is I actually lift my toe off the ground and then use that as a timing mechanism. So I lift my toe up and as soon as I kind of slam my toe down, that's my cue to go. Um, now I used to lift my heel up and put my heel down, but when I put my heel down, it would push my body backwards a little bit, my back would round, and I would kind of wobble on the way up. I find that lifting my toe forces, when the toe comes down, it forces my weight forward a little bit and it puts me in a more split squat position. Uh, now you can also see I'm using a safety bar here and when I'm doing this the toe comes up It hits and I actually am pressing the safety bar grips forward a little bit. So that's engaging my core I also have the safety bar set on a front squat setting now This is actually a transformer bar from Kabuki. So I have it put on front squat uh, as the setting so that rotates the weight in front of me now this I do it a lot because I have uh, my hips are a little bit odd. So if I'm in a back squat position, my back arches a little bit, which tilts my hips forward, which means I have a lot less range. When I'm in a more, um, when I'm in a front squat position, when the weight's front loaded, my core braces, it opens up some room in my hips, I can get deeper and that's what I'm trying to do here because I'm trying to train my legs, mostly in this exercise. Uh, so that is the split squat. Now I'm doing squats, uh, like full normal squats at different points in this program. Um, but it is important to me to mix up the planes of movement that I move in and also the types of movements uh, that I'm doing in those different planes. So a bilateral movement or a unilateral movement, uh, moving laterally or moving in the frontal plane, stuff like that. Um, so I try to incorporate as many of the seven different planes of movement as I possibly can, uh, into, or the seven different human movement patterns as I possibly can into each of my lifts. Now, of course, you don't get there all the time. Sometimes you don't hit one or the other uh, plane, but over the course of the nine days, I hit all of them very frequently. Okay, so that's the split squat. I'm just trying to get, uh, basically it's a quad exercise and I'm trying to get power. Uh, out of my quad coming from the very bottom, maximum acceleration. And this is for mostly the block leg. When you hit, uh, when your front foot hits, you need to be very stable in your quad and you need to be very strong there to stop the linear energy, block it, and use that to rotate the hips and transfer energy. So that's how this is applicable. The next one is a jammer press and I'm going back and forth between these. I'm doing uh, three reps on each leg, um, six sets of that. And I have a, um, I have a gym aware system and it's a bar speed measurement. So I do all of my uh, lifts and percentages and weights based on bar speed. So on this specific lift, I'm trying to be around 1.0 max bar speed meters per second. And I use that to dictate what weight I'm gonna lift. Now, some days I'll lift the same weight that I did last week and I'll be at 1.15. So I know I have to go up. Some days I'll try to lift the weight that I lifted last time, but I'll be at 0.9, so I know I need to go down. Because uh, just the different readinesses of the body fluctuating and stuff like that. Now the Gym Aware app is really cool, very intuitive. If you guys haven't used it before, I would recommend it. They're not sponsoring this video, it's just a tool that I use, that I really like, hooks up to the app, very intuitive, uh, has a lot of different features, um, super easy to use, and super valuable information to have back. Okay, let's get back into the Jammer Press. So the jammer press, you can see here, is just a, an arm that kind of attaches to the squat rack and uh, I load weight on the sides of it and now I'm pressing out and kind of in an upward arc, so to speak. And you can see that here on the screen. Now, this one I'm in a split stance uh, as if I was spread out like in a landed position uh, like I would be when I'm pitching. And I have my left arm or my right arm, whichever one is not doing the press, kind of extended out in front of me. And I'm really trying to sequence the same way that I would when I'm throwing. So what you're gonna see is the arm that is not doing the press is actually going to pull backwards. This is kind of like the glove side 
um, pulling into pulling the torso into rotation. And I'm going to try to lead with my hip and lead with my torso rotation and let that load the pec and then fire uh, the jammer press forward. It is not just a static, okay, I'm pressing uh, just from, the, um, from a static position. I'm actually trying to use the rotation to load the pec a little bit and get that uh, pressing motion. Now this is exactly what happens in a throw. You hit on your front leg, the core rotate, or the, the hips rotate, that stretches the core, the shoulders rotate, that stretches the pec, and the pec rebounds. So that's really the mechanism that I'm trying to train here. And I'm using 75 pounds on this, and I'm doing uh, six sets of three reps here on each arm. Again, I'm trying to be as explosive as I possibly can, so I'm trying to throw this thing as hard as I possibly can in each one of these reps. Okay, so after I'm done with that superset, I'm actually going into an RDL and a split stance cable row. So the RDL here, because I'm supposed to pull it from a dead stop, again, it's a max acceleration day, I actually elevate it on the, uh, the rack here, uh, so it's not on the ground, um, but I wanna get as close to the bottom as I can without overextending my hips. So I found the correct range, and this is the range that I lift at. Uh, so I can pull from the absolute maximum of my range of motion without going over and compromising health. Now I'm doing 335 on these ones. Um, that's up from, I think I started this off season in this program at like 275. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at that. But um, my strength has actually increased and the way I know to go up in weight is when my speeds go up to about 1.1, I'll add weight to bring myself back down to a one and then they'll slowly over time go up and then I'll bring myself back down to a one. So that's why it's super important to have a bar speed measure so you can know how to progress your lifts. Uh, so I'm using a um, split grip here. So my left hand is under the bar, my right hand is over the bar. Um, this is just gonna depend on your anatomy. If you go overhand grip or if you go underhand, I wouldn't really recommend underhand. Uh, and just be careful with your throwing arm if you are pitchers and you are doing this. Uh, I would always prefer that you're over, you have an over grip on the bar with your throwing arm. If you're gonna go under, do it with your non-throwing arm. It just puts the elbow in a weird position when you're trying to lift a bunch of weight. Um, okay, so the, the focus here is I'm going to inflate uh, my core. I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna basically flex my core and then try to breathe into my diaphragm. So that's gonna give me some internal pressure on my core. So that's gonna stabilize everything. And I'm going to hinge at the hips. I'm trying to keep my back extremely flat. Um, or at least in a line, no rounding at the back, and I'm going to grip the bar, put a little bit of tension on it so I know that I'm locked in, and then I'm just going to pull as quickly as I possibly can, move that weight as fast as I possibly can from a dead stop. Uh, so this is training the hinging uh, motion. We've had a split squat position. We've had a pressing uh, position, so that's three um, types of movement. And that's really all there is to say about the RDL. Now you wanna make sure when you're bending down that you're not bending your knees as much. You wanna have a little bit of a flex in them, but you're basically just trying to shoot your hips backwards. And this is a hamstring and a glute uh, exercise. So you're not trying to squat this weight, uh, so to speak. Uh, I have my feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit more narrow than shoulder width, uh, but that's how I set up. And my right foot flares out just a little bit because of my hips. That's the best position for me to lift in. So that is the RDL. Uh, I'm doing six sets of three reps. Uh, and then I have a split stance cable row. Now I'm doing six sets of three reps on each arm in this one. And I'm splitting out in a, uh, basically like a, a landed position like it would be on the mound. And I am engaging a little bit of tension in my scap and on the cable without pulling it uh, too much in the beginning. So again, similar to the deadlift, I have a little bit of tension, so I know I'm locked in in the right place. So I engage that, and then I'm just trying to pull that as hard as I possibly can, move it as fast as I possibly can. Now I'm doing 170 pounds. It's gonna be different on every single uh, like weight stack, depending on the number of pulleys and how it's geared, whatever. But uh, that's what I'm doing on this one in this exercise here. Uh, and again, you can see the opposite arm from the one that's doing the pulling functioning in a uh, kind of a, an opposite way or helping the torso rotate or kind of helping the movement. Now, one thing I will say on all of these exercises is if you can focus and you can think about 
the specific muscle group that is doing the pulling, uh, you're actually gonna get a better training effect. It's really interesting research that's been done uh, that if you think about the muscle that's supposed to be firing, then you're gonna get a better training effect. So be sure that you're always thinking about, okay, if the lat's supposed to be contracting, think about the lat. If the bicep's supposed to be contracting, think about the bicep contracting, stuff like that. Now, on this one, um, I don't wanna pull to a range where my shoulder is going to roll forward, okay? I'm trying to stay in a nice anatomical position. I'm trying to pull back. So in order to do that, I'm trying to think engage the scap and pull the whole shoulder back and contract the lat to about this position, but I'm not going to go to this position. I'm not gonna try to pull so far back that the shoulder rolls forward because then that's gonna put the bicep tendon and stuff in a very poor position. So you wanna think about pulling the whole shoulder back and the lat at the same time and pulling not up with the shoulder. Now I shrug a little bit. Uh, I don't do this perfectly. It's a decent amount of weight, so I'm not, I don't have perfect form here, but you wanna think about pulling this shoulder back and squeezing the lat and keeping the trap up here kind of shut down. You don't wanna end up in this position because again, that kind of tends to roll the shoulder forward and it puts the front of your shoulder at risk. So split stance, brace with the front leg, put a little bit of tension in the scap, um, pull that thing as hard as you can, move it as fast as you can, and that's the exercise there. So that rounds out the max acceleration portion of my lift. Now I've, it's pretty short. Uh, there's not, there's only four exercises there, and that's because uh, I had a couple more early on, and I was so exhausted after moving this amount of weight that I wasn't getting anything out of those. So I have just those four, because those are the four main things that I want to get accomplished in this specific day. Uh, I do have two more lifts that I do. I do a incline bench press and I do a half kneeling um, row. And the purpose of that is hypertrophy. Now it's just muscle size, basically. That's what hypertrophy means. You're trying to grow the muscle. Um, and this is just to get some volume in, really. Uh, I'm not trying to get bigger, per se. I do want to have enough volume, though, that I'm not at risk of being injured when the volume spikes when I go into season. Uh, so I'm doing an incline bench press with a neutral grip bar. Now, the reason that I have this is because when I straight bar, it rolls my shoulders and I, as soon as I come down, my shoulders already rolled forward and it's putting me in that position that I just talked about with the row that's gonna put the bicep tendon at risk. So by rolling my hands out, I actually can open up my shoulders and stay in a neutral position pretty darn well, so I have this neutral grip bar here. Uh, the reason I'm doing an incline is because I do so much flat back uh, bench, either single arm dumbbells or with the uh, neutral grip bar here, that I wanted to get a slightly different plane of movement. So instead of pressing straight out, I'm now pressing somewhat up. Um, and so that's just to even out the, the directions of movement of the lift, which is always good to do. It's always good to add some variability in to uh, your lifting programs in the direction. That's the same thing that I'm doing with this half kneeling row, uh, where I was just pulling straight back from a split stance. Now I'm actually rowing from up above and pulling down, slightly different firing pattern and important to you know, get those, um, to get all those different planes uh, and directions of movement. So I'm doing three by 12 on the incline bench, I'm getting 36 total reps. Now, it's important to say that you should be uh, basically gassed out by the 12th rep on this. I'm trying to lift as much weight as I possibly can, but still getting 12 in, trying to leave one rep maybe in the tank. Uh, but if you're just getting through 12 and you don't feel like you are gassed, like you gotta add some weight. So the purpose here is for it to be challenging and to get some time under tension and to get some additional volume. Um, and so you get a little bit of a training effect there. And I like to do this as a finisher uh, because it's not the most important thing I was getting done today. The whole day was about max acceleration. And this is just kind of supplementing the volume because the volume on the max acceleration wasn't that high. Uh, now on the half kneeling, um, on the half kneeling row, uh, you want to stabilize the core. You want to use your legs to stabilize your base so that you're just pulling with the lat and you're not kind of fluctuating all over the place. I don't do a great job of that because I was tired today, it's been a long day, but that's what you're trying to do. So a stable base that's sitting there, not moving, you wanna brace your core and you wanna keep your core completely uh, neutral, completely tight. You don't wanna have any sort of like rounding of the core and then arching of the back to try to pull the weight. You wanna lock that thing in. 
You wanna let the weight kind of pull you up so you get a little bit of protraction of the shoulder. Okay, and then you're going to engage the lat, you're going to engage the shoulder, again, keeping the trap off, and you're gonna pull that weight down. Now you're gonna get a little bit of bicep in this, mostly lat in this, a little bit of scap uh, in this as well, uh, and from a different angle. So you're trying to just pull that down and end up in a position, again, where you're not pulling it too far, where your shoulder is gonna get rolled forward. You're just trying to get that nice position right there, get full contraction of the lat, and call it a day. And so I'm doing three by 12 on that, on both arms, and that kind of rounds out my max acceleration with an upper body hypertrophy day. That's one day of my nine day uh, lift. So if you are wondering why I don't do other exercises or saying I missed accessory lifts or I missed core or I missed whatever else, it's probably because it's in another one of my days that I do. Um, but if you have any comments or any questions or any further feedback for me, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Uh, if you're not in my Discord channel already, you can certainly ask me questions there and suggest videos there. The link, like I said earlier, is in the description of this video. It is good for one hour after this video posts. So for those lucky few who have notifications turned on who see this video, y'all can get in. And for those of you who are watching it more than an hour from when it posts, There'll be another link coming soon, but y'all can't join right now. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something out of it and learned something. And I look forward to making the next one and talking to y'all soon. So I'll see you in the next video.